Know and serve thy customer. We're going we'll to get more into that, but that's obviously, you know, Bernie Marcus said this over at Home Depot. And then he says it goes for every local business. He says any local retail store, you got one dry cleaners or you got a thousand stores. Figure out who your customer is and serve them and not try to serve every customer. And, and really focus down on that customer. We're going to talk about that in just a second. The other one is make it easy to do business. We said complexity is out is because of growth. The, the leader of the company has to be constantly trying to say, how much easier can we make it to do business here? It's an ongoing mindset. If somebody calls in, here's my, my first question, and we teach this. If somebody calls in, could you close an order on the phone? Do you have the, the systems in place just to close an order? Thank you, ma'am. Come back and see us. Or can you close an order when somebody walks into the store? So that's it. The next one is innovate and dictate. Innovation is how the little airlines out in Lubbock, Texas, like Herb Keller, or the local restaurant, this is how you stay ahead. We're going to cover these today. But these are kind of the five critical success factors. Any questions? Now, strategy. What is strategy? Yes, sir. You, you mentioned Starbucks several times. Saw our this morning where it is now the number three restaurant chain in the world. What is that? Starbucks. It's number three restaurant chain. Yeah, he's been through some issues over there. He, he's, he's getting it done. He's moving onward. Uh, you know, he went in the big decision if you're going to serve sandwiches or not. Does that take away from the smell of the coffee beans? I think he decided the smell of cash was a little bit better than the smoke than the coffee beans. So he, he went ahead and served his sandwiches. Um, you know, they, they, they are a force, and if you look at all these elements, they just hit them right down the middle. Strategy. Here, here's the real quick on strategy. And by the way, we have something in common besides com commerce and education. I like a lot of breaks. So we're going to be taking a lot of breaks to get through this. Um, you know, this is a word often misused in growing companies. Let's go have a strategy meeting. We're having our yearly strategy meeting. And what we teach, real quickly, is there's, there's three levels of strategic thinking that you have to think about on growth. Um, conceptual, and it's a great question to ask. This always silences most companies I go into when you ask this question. And, and you, we should train companies to do this. What is our real purpose? Why do we exist as a business? Well, you ought, you ought to see people start looking at each other in the room when we ask that simple. Why, why do we exist as a business? You know, Chick-fil-A, which was a, my second major customer we got, we talked them into being a big uh, opponent of STI. But Chick-fil-A, one of the, one of the, you know, I'll tell you what, one of the best run companies I've ever seen. But Chick-fil-A, they say, it's so clearly that, that no matter what your reason is, you can understand where they're coming from. They say the reason we're here is to glorify God. <clears throat> now, whether you agree or disagree with that, that is the best conceptual why do we exist that you can come up with. But not everybody's in business to glorify God. There's this. But it needs to be that clear. That is simple. That's why we exist. Why do we exist as a business? Our purpose. And the analytical is this right here. This is a really important question. Can we do what we say we're going to do? Do we have the resources to do what we can say we can do? These are fundamental questions that, that the leaders have to ask themselves on a strategic level. Because you wouldn't believe seven times out of ten, guess what they come up with? When I have focus groups with companies and deal with, guess what we come up, guess what the decision we come up, which is a good decision. You know what, we really can't. So you've got to correct that. You know, you know, you know what, Mark, the sales guy says, you know what, I'm out here selling this, and the operation guy goes, we can't deliver it. Eventually that's going to lead to a big problem. And the operational is, do we have the, resources and people to deliver? Is it, do we literally have the physical uh, beings? Do we have the human beings to deliver what we say we're going to deliver? Do we have the plant? Now here's what happens. Usually we get a big order. 
you know, let's go back to home. We're, we're a growing company, and a Chick-fil-A comes along. We're, we're a software company, of probably at the time we were probably 40 people, and Chick-fil-A comes along and said, we want you to do every store. And now, well, how, do, how do you deal with that? I mean, you know, you could jump up and down, whippee, we got a big contract. But there, that's a, that's a big contract that's, that can go away real quickly if you don't deliver. So when you get that big contract from Chick-fil-A, going back and dealing with these three issues can help you iron it out. Now, growth companies, this is something we have to teach not the leader of companies, but the employees of the, of the company. Can, do you over, do we, can you over promise in a, a growth company? Absolutely. Let's see the headshake. I mean, the day that Chick-fil-A gave us the order and they said, can you do this? And I said, yes. And I remember Jennifer Crest looked at me like, you lying dog. But you know what? I knew we could do it. I knew I had the people, the resources. I knew these three things were, yes, we could do it. Now it was going to take a lot of work and everything. But fortunately, uh, we had the, the infrastructure in place to grow. Now, could I have done it that morning? No. So these are the three levels of strategic thinking to go to. And, and, and then you have to say, what is our strategy? There's two strategies you can grow organically or you can grow with acquisitions. That's, you, tell me another way of growing, I don't know it. You grow organically or you go get the acquisitions. And you have to develop which one you choose to go back to the previous slide. Then, you know, through all the, the social media, the dot-com, I've, I've lived through it all, and these principles have not changed here. I, I, you know, I remember when the dot-com thing was going out, uh, you know, out of the roof, it was the new economy, the new rules of business, and, you know, that went down in a flame because these rules still apply. As a business, you've got to choose which one you're going to be here. Now, in a growth company, guess what a growth company has done? They've gone out there and been successful. They went through your fast track, you know, their cash flow positive. They've done a little bit of all three of these things. Because you know what you're trying to do? Make payroll and trying to get customers. But on the growth curve, you've got to choose which one you want to be. Low cost, value added. And what about low cost? That's Walmart. They've, they've chose, Sam Walton chose very early. We're going to be the low-cost provider. And let me tell you, when I flew out to Bentonville, Arkansas, to sell them software, I went in and I'm like, is this Walmart? They said, yeah. It was a little receptionist up front. She says, go in there and get your chair. I went into their conference room, unfolded my picnic table chair, and their conference room was just looked like a high school lunch room. Now, why is that? Now, why did Sam Walton drive a Ford 150 truck? You have to be low cost in everything you do. I teach these guys, these guys, you know what, you say you're going to be a low cost provider, you can't go out there and get in your Porsche. Because that confuses everybody. Now, uh, the, the folks like, I learned that from the best people like Sam Walton. So, low cost is saying we're going to have the lowest cost. Now, by the way, when I was in that little lunch room, it looked like a lunch room. The real Walmart was behind us, and it looked like the Pentagon, and that's where their computer systems were. Now, he had put all his money into computer systems to get the low cost. Not to have the fanciest building or anything like that, but it was unbelievable. And that was 10 years ago. The next one is the one that confuses most people, value-added provider. What is a value-added provider? You know what? A value-added provider can be with a local carpet company. If, 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 if you're building that business in town and you're a value, it can be, obviously it can be a low cost provider, but value added provider is REI. Now how many of you are familiar with REI? This is the best example in the world that's why they're successful. Uh, value added, REI says this right here, if you're going to buy a pair of mountain boots, we want somebody to sell them to you that's, that's just about worn those mountain boots. Not only knows about it, we want, them, we want somebody to work, we want somebody to work has warned them. We'll, if you buy a kayak, we want somebody to train you how to do that kayak. And guess what? The customer will pay a little more for that. They won't go to Walmart. They'll come over here. The person who's interested in value add, they'll come over here. Now, 
Remember that 7S model. And this is really important. Their shared values is obviously we want people to be part of our enterprise that has done it, to be part of the outdoors, who has a passion for the outdoors. But do you remember this, the staff element? That was one of the 7S's. They have to align that. That's their shared values. Now they've got to go out and find the staff that has been doing that. And they're not, they're not just everywhere on the street. So they, they've developed a high skill set of finding that staff person to do it. And how they do it, remember the other S, systems? They've got the best HR systems in the world. If you sign up for a national park, you don't go for a hike, you better believe REI finds you through their systems. <laughs> the skill level, that was another S. Skills is, you got to know, you got to know your job. So now do you see how <coughs> REI is lining up those seven S's? And that's how you do it on a local business, regional, national, international business. It starts making sense. Now if they had this big shared values that we want people in the mountains, and people who sold boots or walked in those, walked in the, literally walked in those boots, but they didn't have the systems, they didn't have the staff, they didn't have the skills to back it up. It goes off the train, goes off the track. They don't grow. The other one is premium luxury provider. This is Alba Um Many times I see companies there they get into the low cost business and they go, well, you know what? They make all this a bunch of money over there in the premium. I'm going to jump over there. No, uh, the Alba can. What, what do they do? It's a high-end clothing store. <clears throat> Very high-end clothing store. But you, we can think of, you know, Cadillac, think about Cadillac. Think, let's think about Cadillac. That was, you know, that was almost uh, the noun. I, you know, it's, it's the quote the Cadillac. When Cadillac was down here, but when they got into problems and when they started inching back up into value add and low cost, remember they started coming out with some models that were lower priced, mm -hmm. trying to compete against the Camry. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. The customer, you know, one thing we know about customers, and this is why these little three simple kinds, customers want absolute clarity. When I walk into McDonald's, I know it's going to be fast, efficient, not that great, but I'm going to get what I, I'm going to get. It. I got it. And back when McDonald's got off the track, you know, they're doing great now, but four or five years they got off the track because they started looking like, am I walking into a steakhouse or McDonald's? That McRib, you know, I think that McRib is the downfall of McDonald's. <laughs> it's, they bring it back once in a while, but I don't think it's a great comeback. But anyway, you have to do this, and these businesses, and guess what an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur like myself, we'll put ourselves in one of these slots, and guess what happens? A big old juicy opportunity comes along, in one of these other slots, and we're whoo, we, we're, we go after it, we chase it, and it's always a bad, a bad, bad ending. Now, I've had a couple of those bad endings where I was chasing dollars, and it goes back. I said, remember, find your customer, find your customer, and serve that customer. This is now. I think this is knowledge that even if you're starting a business, you need to know. But it's, it's, it's particularly the people who want to grow. Now, we're about to take a break here, because I'll tell you, we're, we're going to have some fun after this first break, but this is the price elasticity of demand, and this is what we teach in MBA school. Now, this is not what I teach in Entrepreneur 2.0, but, you know, but it's important. There is a, it is important. Where you put yourself is if, you're, if you have elasticity in your pricing. If your pockets can expand, you can go to value add, you can go to premium. If you can't, you need to stay in low cost. And to do this formally in college, I mean, I finally put a rubber band around my eyes. If, you, if I can expand the rubber band, it means I can expand my prices. But that's, um, we simplified this in Entrepreneur 2.0 by going into market segmentation. Now, market segmentation is Picking which one of these three elements you're going to be and how do you pick it? How do you determine? You shouldn't just say, whoopee, I, like, I kind of want to be a premium luxury provider because I want to be with, involved in the fancy side of business. That's not how we do it. We've got to find out where our customers are and who we're serving. 